here. I saw one head nodding very affirmatively when earlier tonight we heard the three most important words that every Irish mother tells her son. Always marry up. <laughs> and that head was none other than Patrick Arnold. <laughs> Kelly family, <laughs> and uh, congratulations on that adorable little girl, our youngest Democrat in uh, the audience here tonight, who's behaving great with her purple shoes. <laughs> well, good evening, uh, Manchester, and welcome once again to Ward 13, and our special guest is Pat Arnold, who I believe will be the next mayor of Manchester. New Hampshire. John, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, as always. And uh, that was Governor O'Malley of the great state of Maryland. It brought back memories, uh, seeing that footage. Uh, that was the Flag Day dinner 2013, wasn't it? Uh, I think it may have been. I actually don't 2013. remember which year it was, but uh, it was a great time over at the uh, Puritan back room. And you're right, we welcomed uh, Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, and uh, actually leaving office uh, in just a few days. Are we going to be seeing uh, Governor O'Malley up here in New Hampshire, possibly in a presidential bid? Well, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, you see uh, Governor O'Malley um, stomping in uh, New Hampshire for one reason or another. So well, stay I'd, tuned. I'd like to express my condolences for the loss in your family. Thank you very much. In fact, uh, I think my late father-in-law uh, had a cameo in that video uh, right there. He had a great time that night um, and uh, brief story is uh, how much he admired Governor O'Malley of Maryland because uh, they've known each other for a couple decades back from when Governor O'Malley was uh, a volunteer on Gary Hart's presidential campaign and that's how I met my father. In 1984 or yep. in 1984? I, I, I th yeah, I think it was uh, 84 but uh, you know just to give you an indication of how small the world is uh, particularly in politics uh, but uh, yeah Dick Kelly he's a great guy and um, a lot of people in Manchester are very saddened by that loss. Speaking of uh, a sad loss, we found out uh, just a little while ago that your former colleague, Ed Osborne, passed away at 10.30 yeah. on Friday morning. Do you have any remembrances of Ed? Well, uh, first of all, I'll offer my condolences to his family. Uh, I know they've uh, experienced a number of difficulties uh, the past few months. Oh, yes. uh, it seems like... Uh, Manchester in general has had uh, a lot of great people uh, that we've lost uh, over the past year. But um, let's see, a, a good story I think uh, that I'll always remember uh, with Alderman Osborne is a lot of times the aldermen before meetings are um, sitting around uh, having dinner or something, you know, grabbing a bite to eat before a marathon meeting, which we sometimes were prone to having. Right. And uh, I remember when I, it was shortly after I was elected. Uh, back in 2009, and I asked him because he'd been around a long time. Uh, he had served previously uh, as an alderman and uh, then took some time off and then came back, uh, but uh, was certainly an institution oh, yes. uh, at City Hall. Everybody knew him, and I asked him if he had any advice, and he said, uh, you know, it's important to take stands when you believe in something, but it's even more important to listen. Uh, hard to argue with that, and, uh, you know, that, that'll be one of my... Uh, my favorite uh, memories, I think, of Ed Osborne, certainly uh, very good advice to anyone uh, who's involved in government. Speaking, let's go back to uh, Governor mm -hmm. O'Malley. I was uh, stationed uh, at the NSA, at, uh, mm -hmm. and so in Maryland. And if, my, uh, if this coffee uh, would kick in better, I might even remember <laughs> exactly the time. You know, I pass by it all the time, mm -hmm. but my memory... There we go. But Baltimore in 1988 and 89, uh, the word hellhole would not have been uh, inappropriate. Mm. Yet right now it's, it's undergone a revitalization. One of, my, uh, one of those things you kick yourself at, well, if I had bought that uh, Apple stock for $9 a share when Steve Jobs came back, or uh, if I'd bought a brownstone, you know, if I'd mm -hmm. bought a house in Portland, Oregon in 1983 when I was out there, or a uh, brownstone in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So uh, wasn't uh, Governor O'Malley the mayor of Baltimore? Uh, Governor O'Malley, uh, again, of Maryland, uh, was mayor of Baltimore before he 
uh, was elected governor. It's actually an alderman uh, in Baltimore okay. before that. Um, and uh, you're right that under his tenure, during his tenure, there was uh, certainly a revitalization of Baltimore City. Oh, yes. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's a, a great story uh, to see examples uh, like that. And there are examples all over the country. And we're going to be drawing on a number of uh, those communities, uh, cities around uh, the United States as we uh, talk about issues that we have right here in Manchester. Yes. You know, people still have concerns about crime and public safety. Um You know, opportunities for economic development and job growth, uh, many of which, uh, unfortunately, I've seen pass us by uh, in in the the last few years. But we're going to be talking about what other communities do, because a lot of the problems we face, the challenges we face in Manchester, they're not uh, unique unique to Manchester. Um, You know. Some of them may be unique uh, to, to uh, the residents and taxpayers here, but they're not novel problems. They're faced by communities uh, all over the region and all over the country. Um, no need to reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. Right. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, some of the ideas and some of the programs that have worked in other communities and why we think that they could work in Manchester as well. Right. Is another place uh, that has been revitalized was when Jerry Brown, who uh, – was the uh, mayor of Oakland. Mm. Now, I lived in the Bay Area from 1989 to 2000. Then I lived in the Monterey Bay Area uh, to 2003. But Baltimore, talk about a hellhole. You would never think these cities, if you, in 1989, mm. that a Baltimore or an Oakland would be able to come back. But like you said, it takes, it just doesn't take, uh, it takes a vision, but I believe it takes a certain person to bring them back. Jerry Brown, Mm -hmm. who I kid with my ex-wife, I says, geez, uh, you know, Lisa, you know, you were 12 years old when Jerry Brown was first governor, and now you're you're 50 and he's governor again. Mm-hmm. And he's really helped settle things down in California, which was under a lot of economic stress. I really think it's important, like if it's an O'Malley or a Brown, that the person, the, the, there has to be a chief. There has to be a vision. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I, I completely agree uh, about the importance of vision, and I frankly uh, – it's amazing that you bring this up because I did an interview very recently, just a few days ago, uh, where I was commenting on the uh, impact of personality yes. in government, particularly local government. Because I used to think that it was always about the policy positions and you know whether you support a program or oppose a program, and that uh, personalities were pretty much checked at the door. And uh, my experience at Manchester City Hall as an alderman has uh, taught me that it's anything but that. Uh, so much of... Uh, the opportunities for progress in a community depend on there being uh, the right mix of personalities, uh, you know, political personalities, elected officials, uh, and good ideas. If you have uh, an elected official or an elected body, like an elected city council, that uh, resists change, they like doing things the same way we've always done it for no right. reason other than that's how we've always done it, uh, you're going to get exactly that type of community. Right. Um, on the other hand, if you have uh, individuals in elected office that are open-minded, uh, honest to God, uh, with their door open and their minds open as well uh, to uh, new ideas to address the challenges the community faces, then you can really see something. You can see a community, uh, you know, like Baltimore, um, right? You know, or, or these communities uh, out west. Uh, but you don't even have to go as far as uh, either of those communities. I mean, places like Portland—they weren't always uh, like Portland, how they are Maine. now, right? Um, right. But they, they undergo a revitalization, which is spurred by new political blood, new ideas. And uh, a will. Yes. There has to be a will. Uh, one of the reasons that I supported you, I support you now, and I supported, and I you, in you, 20, I supported you in 2013, was when I uh, heard your speech on your vision of Manchester, because you need a Manchester, you need a vision, but you need will. But you've got to be able to... Uh, I would say I'm going to use a you know uh, pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. There's got you know it's fine if you've got ideas or something, mm-hmm. but you've got to be willing to invest in mm-hmm. the future. Uh, I was away from New Hampshire for over, for over 30 years, and uh, when I was a kid, Manchester was on the ropes because they closed down the shoe shops. Mm-hmm. The mills had already moved on south. And uh, then I would come back, and there was a certain revitalization going on in the 80s and the 90s where it really transformed Manchester. And uh, 
then we had the, the hit when the banking industry mm-hmm. and particularly the insurance industry moved out. But there's really been a lack of not just vision, but of any type of will to change things. And there is a name I'm going to bring up, Theodore Gatsis. When Theodore Gat, I actually know Democrats, people I know that are supporters of you now, that actually voted for Ted Gatsis. You know, he did, he, until you, he didn't have a formidable opponent. And uh, they thought he was a good manager, but uh, they were thinking about his uh, business experience, which I understand a lot of that, uh, the credit can be for his brother, Michael, but we won't go into <laughs> that. And the point is, he hasn't turned out to be a good manager, one, and he seems to lack a certain vision. And I'm going to turn it over to you. But during mm-hmm. the debate, when you were talking about revitalizing, like creating a waterfront mm-hmm. here in Manchester, which other communities have, you think about what Providence did. Exactly. Or, you know, cr- creating the canal. Yep. And Providence was not a nice place. Yeah. When you were in swaddling clothes, <laughs> you could. <laughs> uh, can you just address yeah. about Mayor Gatches sure. and one? There seems to be not only a lack of vision, but there seems to be a lack of, of I'm going to say, managerial capacity. Yeah, um, yeah I, I definitely want to talk about uh, the vision a little bit, but just first on Mayor Gatsis. Um, Mayor Gatsis loves the city. I think there's no question oh, yeah. of that. You know, he, he's uh, given uh, a long time uh, to public service, and I know that's not easy. Um, you know, he's put his name on a ballot many, many times. Right. Um, and he deserves kudos for that, and he deserves respect for that, and that's fair. Um, that being said, it's not personal uh, in campaigns and elections, but we have a democratic process, and uh, we're supposed to be responsive and accountable to the voters and taxpayers of our community. Um, I join many individuals in Manchester in saying uh, – we can do so much better than where we've seen under this current administration. And that doesn't, necessarily, that doesn't mean that Mayor Gatsis is a bad guy, because I don't think he is at all. Uh, it does, however, mean that he's been ineffective in meeting the challenges that uh, we face as a community and uh, leading us uh, into the 21st century leader that Manchester uh, can and should be um, in not only New Hampshire, but also the region. And That'll segue into uh, a lot of what we talked about, as you know, in 2013, was how right now the city, and over the last several years, and this even predates Mayor Gatsis, uh, there has been a uh, pervasive lack of vision and lack of yes. long-term planning. Um, there, what you see at City Hall far too frequently is Band-Aid approaches, Band-Aid fixes. Well, this will get us through, uh, you know, maybe this uh, year's uh, this fiscal year but we're just kicking the can down the road and then we're kicking the can down the road again um, that's not leadership and it's certainly not uh, a legitimate plan for putting Manchester on the map as the leader in education a leader in job growth and economic development uh, or being the best place in New Hampshire to live and raise a family that's not how you attract people by uh, having band-aid approaches and um, you know, kicking the can down the road all the time. You need to say, these are challenges we face as a community and roll up your sleeves and have uh, a vision for what the community could be after you surpass those challenges and then have the plans to make uh, that vision a reality. And that's what we're going to be spending uh, the better part of the next year talking about our uh, plans to make Manchester a leader uh, again in the state of New Hampshire and also the region. Now, uh you, you can play nice, but, you know, this is Ward 13. I remember when I told you when I was trying to get you on the show a little while ago, I said, hey, I've become respectable, and you said that. That, that kind of scared you. <laughs> uh, Ted Gatz is, uh, you know, I, me uh, uh, coming back in 2010 to Manchester, uh, I'd heard this stuff, oh, you know, he's a good manager, this and that. Back in the early 70s, there was something called the Peter Principle. It's about... A person rises because they do well, but then they reach a level and they rise to the level of their own incompetence. Now, if you've ever been in the military or worked for an organization like General Motors, you you know that's true. And I think that he, he's hit the glass ceiling. Mm-hmm. He's the embodiment of the Peter Principle. Now, I've been told by people that it was Michael Gatsis that really was the person that 
the success of the, the Gatz's company. But the other thing was, last night on Manstadam, he was talking about how he was the marketing person, that Ted Gatz was the marketing person. I got to say something. He's done a terrible job marketing Manchester. He, and uh, I listened to you and jo on Joe and Ed and Joe's show. Mm -hmm. And Joe brought up the Pearl Street garage. Now, I really don't know what ha happened to, to that, but Joe believes that he, that Ted Gatz is in his personality. Let's face it, everybody thinks he's a bully. Mm -hmm. We've heard stories recently about the people from Siemens or the, uh, uh, well, the, the lighting, him driving them out no, of his back, office. Back to what I was saying about personality. There's definitely uh, major distinctions uh, yeah. in terms of governing style. And personality plays into that a lot. Um, that being said, I'm saying voters, uh, I'm confident in uh, November, will be making a decision based on who they think uh, has the best skill set and the best vision for the city. Um, and Mayor Gatsis is going to be held accountable for uh, some of the failed policies that uh, he has uh, neglected to remedy. Um, and the instances when he hasn't shown leadership on issues such as public safety or economic development. Um, what you know, issue has education. he shown leadership on? The only leadership, the only accomplishment of his administration I can see is he brought Market Basket here. And, you know, Market Basket's a nice story with what happened recently. Which is great, but then there's but a net loss of uh, those uh, types of, of jobs. Of hundreds of jobs. Yeah. My godson hasn't had a job. He worked at uh, uh, Safeway, and... Uh, he was a union job that paid more. In, in, two, in, two, in 2013, done. during the debates, uh, the mayoral debates between Mayor Gatsis and myself, uh, when we talk about economic development, I would point out that uh, you know, Mayor Gatsis' crowning economic development achievement was a grocery store, whereas many right. of his predecessors had things like the Verizon Wireless um, you know, uh, or the Fisher Cats Ballpark or something like that that has – uh, right. a, a truly powerful legacy uh, and, and certainly is uh, welcomed and appreciated by families in Manchester even today after, uh, you know, the catalyst left office. But uh, Mayor Gatsis's economic development achievements seem to be a grocery store. And his response was basically uh, accusing me of demeaning uh, individuals that uh, work in the grocery store and that, you know, that right. they have jobs. There. And that's not it at all. It's that uh, it's great to have a grocery store downtown. That's important. Uh, I'd like to see a grocery store on the west side again. <laughs> you know, right, uh, right. Uh, that'd be great too. Um, but Manchester can do a lot better than simply having a grocery store. We should have a grocery store downtown. We should have a grocery store on the west side. We should also be talking about big projects, right. like capitalizing on uh, the Merrimack River, because lots of communities uh, throughout the country don't have a running uh, right a, a running body of water, uh, and we don't do anything. Uh, with ours. Um, so, you know, we're going to be talking about uh, ideas to capitalize on opportunities and the potential that Manchester has in it inherently, but for whatever reason, uh, we haven't been uh, benefiting from it. On Manchesterdam, uh, uh, Peter White brought up uh, Riverfest. Mm. And all the mayor gets is, oh, it was so much work and we only broke even. P P Riverfest was an exciting thing. Yeah. And uh, we we're. Uh, we're going to have you for a second show later. We can talk about the rail project. Imagine if we had a rail project. Imagine drawing people up here. Yeah. You know, Riverfest is an exciting thing. Manchester, when I, uh, I used to come visit, seemed a much more vital mm -hmm. community than it has been. Uh, I don't know about what Ginta did. I really wasn't here for, mm -hmm. for uh, Ginta, Frank Ginta. We won't talk about Frank. I have a particular bone to pick with him. But uh, Katzis, there is just this lack of vision. There's this lack of will. Where I'll, I'll just well, look. I'm gonna, I'm going to leave it to him in the course of the campaign to okay, you know, let me cer just, certainly defend his record. Let me but just we're going to be something. presenting ideas uh, as to how we believe we can do better in Manchester and what you could expect in the Patrick Arnold administration. But he he has not brought economic activity here, has he? I would say that the economic uh, development achievements, which uh, there should be dozens more, um, the achievements that we have seen over the last few years are probably in spite of rather than uh, as a direct result of um, political will in the corner office at City Hall. But, uh, you know, 
as I say, we're going to leave it to Mayor Gatzis to defend his record uh, and make that case to the voters uh, as we make our way through this campaign. There's an interesting thing, you know, uh, Ted Gatzis, I know we're going into him, how can I not? At a school committee meeting, he uh, opposed, he wanted very much to enforce a contract provision on a, per, a, a person the, that belongs to the school department, that a residency requirement. And, you know, he talked and talked about it. But when it came to the vote, he actually voted against what he had been proposing and, and, and killed the residency requirement. There's this, it's almost like there's two Ted Gatzes. And I mentioned this in an article I wrote the other day. And Mercurial is, is <laughs> officious. <laughs> I just, you know, following politics, I, I was born in New Hampshire. I've been following politics since 1968, you know, when uh, Paul Newman came next door for Eugene McCarthy. But Ted Gatz is, I just don't get it. Why does he contradict, how, why would he so blatantly contradict himself? Well, it, within a matter of minutes we're talking about. You've, you've dealt with him. I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, and no, you're, it's okay. Uh, but you're the, a these nice. Are, yeah. the, these are no. These are questions that the voters. It's ask. about character. The voters character. ask these questions. I mean, even uh, the press, uh, to a certain extent, it would always be great if the press asked uh, more. <laughs> sometimes well, we in, had in a these press, meetings, uh, yeah. uh, in these aldermanic meetings and school board meetings, but um, you know, I, I think the issues are legitimate issues uh, for debate. Yeah. During uh, the the political discourse that takes uh, place during campaigns. Um, What's your position on this? You know, why do you advocate uh, this position or why have you advocated this position and then changed your mind? Sometimes people do change their minds, and that's okay. But you better have an explanation, and you better be able to uh, offer that explanation to the voters uh, if you hope to be accountable to the people that you're supposed to be serving. I just have to tell you, Pat, my opinion, uh, I don't think the uh, city of Manchester could survive another uh, Ted Gatz's administration. Well, I think it, we're it, having trouble enough as it is. Some people say it's my youthful optimism, but uh, you know, we, <laughs> we definitely, uh, with the, the individuals that I speak to every day in Manchester and different parts of the city, uh, there's certainly, I think, a critical mass this year. Um, you know, we've reached a, a peak uh, recognizing that our brightest days uh, might indeed be ahead. And Let's we're, we so. could be turning a corner. Uh, we, we have people... Uh, to, to relate back to a comment you made at the beginning of the program. There are people that uh, have supported some candidates in the past. Now they're supporting us or they're saying we need to have change in the way we do things in the city. Um, or they're recognizing that there have been far too many opportunities lost and opportunities that have passed us by in the last few years. And it's great to have those conversations. Um, and it's not about individual people as much as we, uh, you know, when you are the incumbent, uh, you're, you're typically the face and the name that gets associated with lots of uh, the challenges or the lack of solutions or the, the gridlock yes. uh, that occurs in government sometimes. But, you know, it's really not about individual people or individual candidates. And that's uh, a theme that we've tried to uh, hammer home in our campaign in 2013. And we're going to be talking about it again. It's about the people of Manchester. It's a people powered campaign. Um, my name happens to be on the signs, and don't get me wrong, I'll be uh, you know, presenting my proposals and my plans to uh, the taxpayers and voters of the city that I think will move Manchester forward. But it's, it's about uh, the community coming together and saying we can do better than where we are, recognizing you have these challenges uh, in our community, and what are we going to do about it? Okay, uh, Pat, uh, you're going to, we're going to wrap up the first segment sure. for this week. Sure, sure. Uh, What's uh, I hear you're, you're you're going to have an office opening. Well, we my wife and I uh, are again hosting a post holiday party, uh, and that's going to be on um, next Thursday, uh, January twenty second. Yes, it is uh, five thirty to seven at our campaign office, uh, which is at eleven seventeen Elm Street. It's the same place the campaign office was uh, last year. And we're, what's the landmark that people can tell? Well, it's the uh, office behind the Bridge Cafe. Okay. Uh, so we, we'd love to have you stop in. No RSVP is required, but you can also get details of the event and other events uh, we're going to be doing at our website, www.arnoldformare.com. Thank you very much, Pat. Thanks, John. And we'll have you back, and I will, in a couple of minutes, and you can see Pat next week. Thank you very much, Manchester, once again for visiting Ward 13.